All right, welcome back to uh, AP Physics 1, Unit 5. We're coming towards the end of this unit, okay? In the last video, we talked about conservation of momentum. In this video, we're going to keep applying that, but in a different situation. Previous video, we were looking at explosions. This video, we're going to start talking about collisions. And in physics, there's two types of collisions, of which the first one is what we call an elastic collision. So in physics, a collision is a situation where two objects free from external forces strike one another. Again, Here's that caveat, right, which really allows us to apply conservation momentum. Okay, so recall from previous a couple previous slides that momentum will always be conserved. Now, once we try to determine the types of collisions, what we're going to focus on is the kinetic energy, right? So how does kinetic energy respond, right, in the collision? Now, if... A collision occurs and the kinetic energy is conserved we call that an elastic collision all right so what this means is that the total kinetic energy before and after are going to be equal so in addition to the momentum being equal before and after the kinetic energy will be equal before and after okay i don't know why i'm All right, so when the objects collide, right, the reason why we call them elastic collision is because they will rebound elastically after the collision with no loss of energy to heat or deformation. Now, that's a little bit of a misconception because what happens is um, sometimes, you know, automatically students will think that, oh, look, it's a rebound, right? It's coming off, so it has to be elastic, right? However, most real-world collisions are going to be the other type, which are inelastic, even though they may look like an elastic collision. So, so for an elastic collision, conservation of kinetic energy may have to be applied to the collision, right? And so if we, again, here's our statement for conservation of momentum. Right, so the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. And total momentum is momentum of object one plus the momentum of object two before the collision. Oh, I put in B. I've been using I's for initial, not befores, or B's for before. And that has to equal the after. So the, the momentum of one after plus the momentum of two after. Now, just like with energy, there's a lot of little things here, but again, cancel what you need. All right, so for example, if one of my objects is not moving before, I can cancel out M2, V2 initial. All right, if one of my objects comes to a stop after, I can cancel out, you know, M2, V2 final. All right, and then when we look at the energy, it's just going to be 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared uh, initial, right? These are all initials, equals 1 half m1 uh, v1 final squared plus 1 half m2 v2 final squared, okay? Now, what this does, once we do a little bit of algebra with these combinations of equations, will give us a special set of equations, okay? Now, these are not on the AP equation sheet, okay? So you're going to have to memorize these. So the first thing is very important. Note that the, the sum of the velocities of each object, they're equal to each other, okay? So that's one thing you can do. The second thing is if I need to find the velocity of, of object A, and I don't have enough information, or at least I don't think I have enough information, I can use the equation that you see there. So key thing is if after or before the collision, object B is not moving, I don't have to worry about that second part. I'm just looking at the first part. 
and then it kind of looks like it, it, it flips right in the on the other side right so um, or when I, if I define the final velocity of object B, right? I'm still going to plug in all that information, right? But again, if object A is not moving, right, there is my velocity after the collision. And we're actually going to use this relationship right here to help us solve the example problem, okay? If you really want to see how it's solved, um, the algebra is about a page and a half worth. We can do that, okay? All right, so next... Here's an equation. A collision between a geological hammer and a rock lying loose on the ground can be approximately elastic. Calculate the final speed of a 0.19 kilogram rock when struck by a 0.55 kilogram hammer moving with an initial speed of 4.5 meters per second. And the rock is initially at rest. So typically what we would do is we would start with our sum of the momentum. Right? So the sum of the momentum before it has to equal the sum of the momentum after. And so we would say M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial equals M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. Okay. Now, we would be looking for V2 final, but you do see there in V2 initial is zero. We see there's a problem. I don't have V1 final. So this is why... These equations on this slide are important. So this is why you really, really, really want to memorize these in some way. Okay? So I know that V1 or V2 final is going to equal, um, it's MA minus MB over MA plus MB times V1 initial. Oh, sorry, I've been using ones, not Bs. Sorry. So M1, M2, right, over M1 plus M2. And so now I'm just going to plug in my numbers, right? So M1 is 0.55. M2 is 0.19. I'm going to do that over the summing of them, multiplied by 4.5. Okay, and then I find that my the speed of the rock after would be 2.47 meters per second, right? So V2F. Now, they may ask you, you know, what is the speed of both of them after? And so then we can apply the first equation here, right, where the sum of the speeds are. So it's a V1 initial plus V2 initial, or sorry, V1 final equals V2 initial plus V2 final. But here's the thing, V2 initial is zero, right? And so if I want to find V1 final, it's just going to be simply V2 final minus V1 initial. Okay, and so I would have 2.47 minus 4.5, and I end up with negative 2.03, um, which really doesn't make sense because it should be a positive um, because... Oh, the same direction, same direction. Okay. Uh, V1 final. Okay. You can also plug it into uh, this equation because remember, our second object's not moving. Okay. All right, so that is the elastic collisions, okay? So now let's go ahead and we'll stop this video and we'll look at uh, 